it's uh, my pleasure now to, induce, uh, to introduce my friend and the, um, uh, the head of the Women's Bureau at the Department of Labor, Sarah Manzano Diaz. Uh, uh, Sarah Manzano Diaz was unanimously confirmed by the United States Senate on February 11, 2010, as the 16th Director of the Women's Bureau of the United States Department of Labor. The Women's Bureau was created by Congress in 1920, the same year women were granted the right to vote. It is the only federal agency exclusively mandated to serve and promote the interests of working women. Um, Manzano Diaz's is, uh, uh, vision is to empower working women nationwide to achieve economic security, and she has spent her career in public service advocating on behalf of working class families, women and girls. She has more than 25 years of federal, state, and judicial experience, including 16 years in management at the federal government level. She was previously appointed by Governor Ed Randell as Deputy Secretary of State for Regulatory Programs at the Pennsylvania Department of State. As the highest ranking Latina in Pennsylvania state government, Manzano Diaz was responsible for protecting the health, safety, and welfare of the public by overseeing the licensures of approximately one million professionals. She was also a member of Governor Rendell's STEM initiative that supports the development of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education and workforce development. We are delighted to have uh, her with us today, and I turn the podium over to her. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm pleased to be here with you today to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the historic Triangle Shirtwaist Fire in New York. As the director of the Women's Bureau, I am excited to serve as a moderator in this panel. Um, this tragic uh, event really helped shape the rise of workers' rights across the country. What makes it especially meaningful to the Women's Bureau is that the rise was primarily done by determined women and young girls laboring over hard and perilous work conditions. As a director of the Women's Bureau at the Department of Labor, we continue to work every day on the issues that support working women. I understand the gravity of this tragic event, and I also appreciate the changes that came out of it as a result. On that March day in 1911, hundreds of women were putting away their needles and threads, putting on their coats and getting ready to go home. Their backs were sore, their fingers were achy, and like many of our families, where they were probably thinking of all the extra responsibilities that they had when they had to get home. These were mostly young women, some as young as 13. They were mostly Jewish and Italian immigrants. These immigrant women were the working class uh, folks and who were really the solid backbone of our industrial age. When the fire broke out, it was fed by the dust and the scrapes in the factory and plus the barrels of oil. It raced through the top floors of the building and the women were trapped by the locked doors and blocked passages. It only took 18 minutes for the fire to kill 146 people. All but 23 were women and girls. These women worked long hours, often seven days a week, with little time for lunch. They were only paid about $6 per week. Often they were required to use their own needles, threads, irons, and sewing machine. They didn't have bathrooms and the conditions were unsanitary. In 1909, they had gone on strike. They stood up for their rights and took action, demanding better working conditions, higher wages, weekly pay, a limit on overtime, payment for supplies, and a more equal distribution of work. These women instituted a work stoppage that interrupted the production of the factory. With the support of the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, as well as the National Women's Trade Union League, an organization that lent moral and financial support to the organizing efforts of the women workers, they picketed and they won concessions from their employers. In the aftermath of the fire, the women, I mean, in the aftermath of the fire, the owners of the factory were not held responsible by the courts. That created an additional wave of public protest and sympathy for the women workers. The New York State Commission on Safety was established, 
and following their recommendations, the New York State Legislature set up a factory investigating commission that resulted in the passage of vital factory safety legislation. The victims of the fire can rightly be considered martyrs for women's rights and women's rights um, uh, and workers' rights. This is really a pivotal moment in our history. I think it's right to remember those who lost their lives that day, and in doing so, clear the passageways and unlock the doors to a better life for working women and children. That spark, the spark from that fire, spread across the country. It ignited the labor movement and fortified women for the fight to protect and advocate for women's rights, equal pay, equal opportunity, and for labor um, to uh, move forward with strong efforts on safety, sanit uh, sanitary conditions, and for education and social justice. Attitudes changed, rules and policies were established, um, and women like Frances Perkins, Rose Scheiderman, and Mary Anderson helped lead the way. You heard already who Frances Perkins was, who was our first woman in the cabinet, as well as our first, uh, not our first, but first female Secretary of Labor. But Rose Scheidman is a union organizer and a leader of the Women's National Women's Trade Union League, an active worker for working women's rights. And then Mary Anderson was the first director of the Women's Bureau. Uh, she, she was the first up from the ranks labor woman to head the executive department. Um, Mary Anderson directed the Women's Bureau for nearly 25 years and led the effort to win better wages, hours, and working conditions for women, and served five presidents during her tenure, and saw the ranks of women workers more than double. Actually, as I was looking, we celebrate our 90th anniversary this past year, and I went down to the archives to look at what the Women's Bureau was doing. This is a book that talks about standards for employment of women in industry. This is the precursor to the Women's Bureau of Women in Industry Service. But the interesting things, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So it says in terms of standards that are recommended, hours of labor for women, uh, no woman shall be employed or permitted to work more than eight hours in a day. The wages, equality with men wages. This is back then. We're still working on that. Uh, working conditions, and it talks about safety. And so it's very interesting that even back then, the Women's Bureau was part of this history in terms of the aftermath. And in here, they did studies of women candy makers in Philadelphia. They talked about... Um, they, they documented the lives of working women in various industries, hours and conditions of work for women in industry in Virginia, and on and on. I just wanted to share that with you because uh, it talked also about women in government service. This is back then at the same time, so that the Women's Bureau shares an incredible history with all these events and all these incredible women. So um, I wanted to have the opportunity to let you know that as a result of Frances Perkins, women like uh, Mary Anderson, uh, the Department of Labor had its role to play. I wanted to share with you, for those of you who didn't see it, yesterday in the Washington Post, Secretary Solis had an article in there called What the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire Means for Workers Now. And I just want to uh, read a quote to you, which is at the end. And our Secretary of Labor, Hilda Solis, said, History is an extraordinary thing. You can choose to learn from it, or you can choose to repeat it. For me, the choice is clear, as it was for Francis Perkins. We must always be a nation that catches workers before they fall, end quote. And that's from our secretary as of yesterday. So I have the pleasure and the opportunity to uh, share this discussion and moderate it with you today. And um, before I begin, let me tell you who our who our great panel are. I'm going to share that with you. Give me one second. Here we go. First, to my right is Kirsten, Kirsten uh, Downey. She is the author of The Woman Behind the New Deal. In 2008, Kirsten Downey shared 
in the Pulitzer Prize awarded to the Washington Post staff for the coverage of the campus slaying in Virginia Tech. She profiled two his heroic professors who died protecting the lives of the students. She left the Washington Post last year to focus on finishing her biography of Fr Frances Perkin, Perkins, the woman behind the New Deal, the life of Frances Perkins, FDR's Secretary of Labor, and his moral conscience, published by Doubleday. Next to her is Robin Muncie. Robin Muncie is an Associate Professor of History, University of Maryland, College Park. Professor Robin Muncy's scholarship is focused particularly on social policy and progressive reform movements of the 20th century. Her first book, Creating a Female Dominion in American Reform, 1890 to 1935, analyzes the role of middle class women in creating social safety net. In her second book, Endanger Engendering America, is a Documentary History of the Role of Gender in the United States Since, ni since 1865. In 2007, Professor Muncie was a fellow at the Woodrow Wilson International Center of Scholars, and she returned to the center as a public policy scholar in the summer of 2009. She also, among all her accolades, is a Fulbright scholar. Last but certainly not least is Mr. Joseph McCartan, a Georgetown uh, a university history professor. Um, he is an associate professor of history where his expertise is on 20th century U.S. labor, social, and political issues. He teaches a course in 20th century labor history, U.S. since the 1945, as well as America between the wars, in addition to 20th century U United States and the society. And um, I'd like to have uh, if we can welcome a round of applause for our panelists. <laughs>